start at the beginning. Why don't we do that? Dan, great Saturday morning. It's raining outside. Nothing it's, better than it's got, doing it. It feels a, stuffy. It's been raining. I like. I got feel like I got something on my ears. Uh, yeah, I noticed that. Well, um, okay, so I'll, I'll explain. We asked that we, tr I asked you to try the headphones. Um, we'll just see how it goes. And it may be an interference with you because you're concentrating on that sound that's coming in your ears. On the other hand, it levels out sound. It does some of those kind of things. I got a so, lot of interference. Uh, there, there's always something, I'm sure. Uh, so why don't we, uh, why don't we, why don't we start? Here it is, Got Therapy. Oh, we're here. So uh, we talk about a little bit of everything, mental health, psychology, what's going on in the, in the current environment out there. Um, we just finished up a, a Talk with Mike and Tom episode where we talked about the Joker. Yes. I and, thought it was uh, disturbing that, um, okay. that, he, uh, that the hack found it too erotic. I just no, that was not what really he sure. said. <laughs> you, gotta, you maybe you need to rewind and go back and watch <clears throat> yeah, that again. Couldn't, uh, so, um, all right. So, what what is your take on the Joker? Did you you saw you've seen the movie? My take that that it was an autobiography. I could have written. It. Okay, <laughs> it was all about you somehow. I don't man, know what that me. means. Man, that's me. Well, here's what I thought. A couple ways to think about this because <clears throat> this time, well, not this time because I think I'm presenting at three thirty. I'll be presenting a paper that I've written or I'm about to write. Uh, that's what tomorrow's for, um, and. Um, I'm Here's sorry, what I was I'm thinking. Over here, but go ahead. And so, um, there's a way that that the Joker may connect with that. And he, here's how we start. Because um, okay, I start my paper with this this quote from uh, it's sort of a bastardized quote from Todd McGowan, and okay. it's um, Can you imagine a world where wealth is as shameful as pedophilia? Okay. Yeah. You you kind of. Uh, uh, Again, <laughs> left without words. But um, I will say that you're making a point with that. And can you imagine if we go to that that level where well, the strong emotional reaction and feelings or well, that way McGowan would say you know. that um, you know he has strong libertarian leanings. So it wouldn't be that we impose, but that if we uh, have a collective and societal directive through shame that the accumulation of too much money is a bad thing, something you'd be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. Yeah, and is it? I mean, I'm, I'm not um, sure. I'd like uh, to find out. <laughs> that, that, that this is, it's room for exploration there, for if sure. I, on the, if, on the, I the could, um, if you could only try it out yourself you me, to see. You would get, you you, give me you a shot, we'll see. You self-experiment um, there. But I don't and, mean the pedophilia part. I mean the oh, work part. Oh, well, good. I'm glad, not, you clarified. Uh, I'm glad you clarified that for us. <laughs> But yeah, so so much money. It, there's something wrong with too much money, right? I mean, that's the that's where he's going with that with that quote. That wow, it's just self indulgence. Um, it well, is greed. It's I want more, and when when is enough? But maybe okay. it also creates monsters in a way. Okay. Maybe that's at least one of the subtexts to the Joker. Because if you've there, there are going to be some spoilers, right? Should we say that? There's yeah, be... we've already spoiled that movie uh, big time. <laughs> and uh, just a quick search on the uh, Internet. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of reviews of that movie already mm -hmm. right now out there. So um, I don't think we have to worry. You can go wherever okay, you want to, ahead. all right? So uh, we, we, the, the, there is uh, one of the subtexts is that um, uh, the very first thing you hear when the movie starts is there's this um, a garbage strike. And so um, right. there is this uh, buildup of garbage, and um, the, uh, the whole city looks like uh, uh, New York did before um, uh, all the cleanup and whatnot. It, uh, it looks like something that comes like, would come out of a Lou Reed song. Right. And so there's just this buildup of, uh, of garbage. There's um, uh, uh, dingy rooms. Uh, there's just this, uh, you know, patina of filth over, over everything. Yeah, I mean, almost the look too. It's almost a gray film mm -hmm. uh, uh, look, and and that's a color palette that they, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the people who make these movies talk about color palettes mm -hmm. and kind of keeping the movie consistent over, mm -hmm. with color over the. And the other thing I, I noticed it was almost a seventies or eighties mm -hmm. sort of film look yeah. too. Taxi Driver, I think, was a um, was a big inspiration for this. So it was okay, sort All of right, that'll do it. Scorsese in a way, and um, uh, but. Uh, at least 
implicit in that is that there is a tremendous amount of inequality. Um, uh, um, he doesn't. Uh, his services are cut off. He can't. He no longer afford medication. Um, he's sitting and doing therapy in this crammed room. Um, at one point, his therapist says, "They don't care about you, and they don't care about me." Wow. So there's this, you know, and I think, I mean, obviously, from um, a theoretical perspective, there's there's more to it than that. But sure, that's at least in some way ties in with this notion that there is that there is something about the um, distribution of wealth that could generate or at least help generate monsters. You know? Yeah. Well, I, well, I think so. I mean, it was a perfect <clears throat> setting for, uh, with the grade, the dinginess, the overcrowdedness, the garbage on the street, just enough, in some cases a lot of garbage, some t- not so much, but enough to kind of keep it uh, rolling. And and I think that, that the thought was that this guy's going to have a rough future. I, 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 for me, I kept. I, I'm the hopeful one over there, thinking, "Hey, even though that thing in the hospital that caused him to lose his job, maybe they'll forgive him and overlook that, and he'll have something. Or maybe he found a girlfriend, and mm. things are going to be better." <clears throat> oh, that was just the hopefulness there. Sorry. And even the girlfriend was, you know, uh, was in a way um, uh, uh, delusional. It was a defense. He right. literally sort of conjured an object. That uh, was illusory, and um, uh, you can think about this too. That you know, when we talk about this from a psychology perspective, why not? Why, why, why not? Why not talk about the um, uh, psychology theory is all about the birth of subjectivity and how subjectivity is is both forged and maintained throughout the uh, someone's uh, life cycle. Okay, and we can see that um, all of his attempts, in some degree, were um, failed attempts to be able to both generate and maintain a subjectivity. There's a moment where he says something like, um, after he shot those people uh, and he saw himself on the news, it's the first time I've ever felt real. Right. right? Wow, that's a serious statement. And there, right there. Is, there was something about that act, um, any act, but specifically that act that grounded him at least temporarily and began something, you know. And there's also this laugh that he has, right, that we, we find out that is um, <clears throat> supposed to be connected with neurological damage <clears throat> he may have sustained as a <clears throat> child. Right, yeah, it's almost like a Tourette's <clears throat> or something, that, this outburst <clears throat> of laughter. And it, and it was always at the most inappropriate times. <clears throat> it countered whatever was going on in the moment, it seems like. And <clears throat> he did it. I, I just recall some, he was watching a, a comedian in a comedy club, and <clears throat> everyone would laugh at a certain joke. He wouldn't, and then all of a sudden burst out laughing. <clears throat> laughing. So I found that uh, that that is disturbing as well. It's, well, but you'd notice also when he did the laugh, it would erupt from him, and it would be painful. Like he would he would go. Oh. As if um, it was something he didn't have control over, and it, um, um, and at one point I think it was his mom that said something to him about the laugh, and he said that that's that that's the only really real thing about me. So there's there was an identification with it, and there's this notion in psychoanalytic theory. It's called um, the pure act, uh, an eruption of the real, and that. Uh, so much of what we are is socially constructed. So much of what okay. we are is an attempt to be able to um, uh, maintain uh, individual and societal connections at the exe- uh, um, at the cost of certain parts of ourselves. And so there is a part of us that will articulate it, that uh, that is um, the the term is extimate. So it is a part of us, but it feels outside of ourselves, something out of our control. And his laugh was sort of an extimate thing. It it um, it would erupt. It would. Um, he didn't have control over it. And in some ways, if we're looking at this as an attempt to be for him to be able to build and sort of sustain his own subjectivity, his own sense of who he was, there's a trajectory in the film. Like, um, and if you follow from the very beginning, like early on when he's in the bus and the. Um, the kids, he's playing with the kid, and he's right, trying to right, have some right. connection. Right. That and was going well, and most people would have said, hey, that's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could see myself doing that. But then when the woman cuts him off, he experiences this rupture. He experiences a, uh, it's both a, a narcissistic injury but an attachment rupture. And 
all through the film he's attempting in some way to be able to reach out and find connection, specifically with um, uh, paternal figures when he has the fantasy of um, of being in the audience with um, uh, the talk show hosts and whatnot. But you can see at that moment on the bus when he has this rupture, he begins to laugh. And the laugh, mm -hmm. in a way, is sort of an extimant response, a pure act that he has little, little or no control over. And it reflects how uh, all of us are divided subjects, but it mm -hmm. reflects the, the level of division in him, um, mm -hmm. a psychotic mm -hmm. division, an inability to connect and an inability to move within um, cultural, societal, and symbolic rules. He just sort of, he's sort of stuck. And if you follow it through, there's a point at which... Um, and it, it, the, um, it also begins with him um, giving himself yes. a smile. Right. And his mom kept telling him over and over and over again that, you know, to be happy. And we suspect that's what he was being told when he was being abused. Mm -hmm. So um, um, uh, early on, in he, was, he was literally handed a comedy mask that he had to wear, and it had to cover up all the things that he had no way to be able to articulate all the trauma that he was unable to own. We talked last time about mm -hmm. post-traumatic growth. We can sure. say this is a struggle to be able to integrate serious trauma, but it begins with him doing this. He does that with uh, Bruce Wayne, he, who at that point he thinks is his brother. Mm -hmm. He thinks Bruce, hath Fain, Bruce Wayne has the father he doesn't have. Right. But there's a moment in the film toward the very end where he's, he spits up blood and he stands up on the police car and he just does this, and he gives himself a smile of blood. So there is a movement between attempting to be able to put on a happy face to finding a way to integrate that in a way that uh, doesn't necessarily move him in society, but it's suddenly, and, and he's, he's surrounded. All this time he's wanted an audience. Uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, he's mm -hmm. wanted affirmation and connection. Right. Right. And now he's surrounded by a sea of, 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 of uh, violent protesters and rioters, and then he paints that smile on his face. So we can literally see the movement from, from there to there. And with his laugh, there's at the very end where um, he's talking with the social worker or the therapist. And um, he laughs. And at this point, I can't remember, but I don't think the, um, the laugh he experiences is painful. Mm -hmm. At that point, I think he's been able to integrate the laugh in a way and now he's no longer divided in the way that he was before. And then when she asks him, hmm. instead of desperately needing connection, he says to her, you wouldn't understand. And then the implication is he kills her because we see her blood on his foot as he's dancing past the thing. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So there was a movement yeah. of, at the beginning, he was desperately in need for connection. Um, again, particularly paternal figures and whatnot. And then uh, toward the end, he... The implication is he killed the girl that he was fantasizing about. Mm -hmm. uh, we start, we see him kill his mom. Mm -hmm. um, there is a point at which he um, he no longer seeks out attachment. Um, he's on a completely different trajectory. If that makes sense. Oh yeah, it does make sense. <clears throat> well, I'm uh, uh, yeah. It, it, it was dark in so many ways, but I think the realism about that because it, 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 there's you know as you watch a movie, you always sort of project into the movie various kinds of things and and i was thinking there are probably some people out in our world exactly like that mm. to without you point the, your finger at me I, I i don't know my fingers were going some <laughs> up in the air but uh, basically what i'm saying there are some folks that are struggling with these types of issues mm. maybe not the homicide and some well, of the other stuff but he's there pretty close and, i think we, we could universalize this in a way because for okay. a movie to have any sort of, p of appeal it can't be completely alien it has to it has to articulate aesthetically some part of our own unthought knowns. And all of us have had to struggle to be able to develop and maintain our own subjectivity. So mm -hmm. that, 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 is, mm -hmm. that is ubiquitous. That's a universal sure. phenomenon. So I think there's something, there's something about watching. The difference would be is that uh, most of us are lucky. The Lacanians talk about their version, definition of psychosis, is someone who can't move within the symbolic order. So they can't uh, they can't use words and culture, and the things around them to help them articulate who they are. <clears throat> and we can see that 
you know, all of us have to struggle to be able to do that. That they have sort of Freudian words for it that we have to accept symbolic castration. And what that sort of means in a in a broader sense is just that we have to learn to accept the name we're given. We have to learn that we uh, to 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 be placed mm-hmm. in the context in which we're placed. We have to find some comfort in that, no matter how conflictual and difficult it might maybe we can still center ourselves within the context in which we're placed and someone who's psychotic can't do that and the right. joker was like that literally he, he couldn't um um and at the beginning he was the victim of his lack of contextualization he was pathetic um he was hunched over he was uh, when the kids jumped him and when he was dressed as the clown in front of the store, and mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and what was the sign he was the sign he was carrying was said um, I don't, maybe it said going on about I can't remember what it said but there was something interesting about the sign too but he okay. Um, okay. and then he gets go uh, back. right so he all through this and but when we see this turn he no longer struggles to move within the symbolic order he just he sort of abandons it as soon as he abandons the possibility of attachment and connection right. Um, there was and one to be of, working on that throughout yes one of the pivotal scenes i think too is one of the father figures the guy who gave him the gun and then sold him out right shows up at the department right and, and uh acts like on some level he's concerned about uh about uh, uh mm-hmm. arthur but really he's afraid that the drunk gun's going to get traced back to him that's what it's all about and right. uh so the uh, arthur the joker you know, stabs him in the eye with a knot, with a thing, with a yes. scissors. Uh, very <clears throat> brutal. Repeatedly. Yes. <clears throat> but very with brutal. him is um, um, the um, um, politically correct term would, would be um, uh, small guy, little guy. What, 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 am, I, what, what am I looking for? Oh, um, uh, small person. I, I okay, have no I idea. Okay, but yes. small person. I'm, I'm I know be some able, things you can't say, but I'm not sure what that. the correct is. But, but, um, uh, all right, well, we're, we're, we're trying to keep it right. So He's really freaking out, and the Joker's sitting there with blood all over him and everything, and um, he tells him he can go, and he even has to get up and unlatch the door and says, before he walks out, he said, you're the only person who was ever kind to me, mm-hmm. right? Powerful statement. <clears throat> and then at that moment, but he's already been in the process of of disentangling himself with with attachment and connection. He's already crossed a Rubicon of sorts, uh, away from any potential of mediating his psychotic state, and instead he begins the full bloom and full expression of it. He begins to integrate. Maybe that's not necess- uh, on mm-hmm. he's begin- As he integrates parts of himself, he doesn't integrate himself into the world around him. In fact, he becomes a disruption. Um, so, yeah, well, I, I I like the way you are putting that together. It, it does make sense. I, I kept. I, I was just wondering hypothetically, had the world been kinder uh, along the way? Maybe there was a girl that would take interest. Maybe a job worked Look out. What could have happened to me if the world had been kinder? <laughs> you know, that's not what I'm talking I about. I could have done things. Asked. I could have been a contender. Yeah, there's the uh, listen, my friend. There's going to be a movie made one day, and uh, I'm not sure there's going to be a happy ending to yeah. it. That's all I'm going to say. But no, I, my my thought was, uh, had there been some outside influences on him, do you think he would have maybe taken a different uh, track through through his life? Uh, mm-hmm. Had there been some things for support that would have supported him and understood him, and people that would reach out? What's mm-hmm. what's your What's your thought about that? Because I'm, I'm thinking not everybody's going to go uh, down the path of homicide and taking it out and becoming mm-hmm. psychotic and those kind of things. Uh, is there hope about this in some ways? What do you mm-hmm. think? Well, I mean, we know something about his earliest history. He was abandoned, and then he was taken up by a, by a mom who um, also appears psychotic. Certainly yes. she had a delusional system and... Um, um, as there was so early on, there certainly, uh, and there was, the Lacanians have this really big deal about um, their, and it doesn't have to be a, a man, it's just a paternal figure. There has to be some form of paternal figure that sort of ushers you into the social order and cultural order. And as you notice, he was he was in a search for a father all through the film. The guy who gave him the gun was a father figure. Um, um, uh, Bruce Wayne's dad... Um, the guy, uh, the radio, uh, the guy on the TV, 
all of these were potential. In fact, part of his fantasy involved right. the, the um, what was that guy's name? Robert uh, De Niro played um, the game show or, or the talk sort show of guy. Johnny Carson like yeah. figure yeah, there. Yeah, Letterman y kind of guy. Letterman, yeah. And um, he, he, in his fantasy with that guy, the guy gives him a hug, remember? Yes. So it's like he is, he is, there is a father hunger. There is a hunger for some sort of stabilizing force that he can identify with, that can generate that I, that ego ideal, something that allows him to sort of center himself. And he, he's literally searching for it throughout the film. And um, at every turn, what he gets is, um, is a malignant paternal figure. They all fail him in so many different right. ways. Right? Yes, they did. Mm-hmm. Because even at the very end, they're... And it, it seemed a little more ambiguous when you when he actually got there. But they were he, the goal may have been to make fun of him, to bring him on TV. Yeah, that was and, a, at the outset. <clears throat> it really was. Yeah, right. It yeah. was you showed know, a clip of him bombing at a comedy um, mm-hmm. a club. Yeah, and boom. So if, what if he had had some sort of paternal figure? What if he? And this is where the the Todd McGowan is quote comes into play because. What if um, part of what happens when there is such an unequal distribution of wealth, be it physical or emotional, there are lots of folks that don't get what they need. And, sure. and so I think he's a beautiful example of the sort of poverty of not just income, but poverty of attachment, of emotional connection. It, um, mm-hmm. He grew up in a, in a desert. And uh, mm-hmm. like you said, most, most folks find... Uh, a completely different path than than he did, mm-hmm. but you can mm-hmm. you can see the consequences of that, and in some ways, um, you know, you could the um, the uh, the all the stuff that was going on outside the <clears throat> the trash and all this the the, the were a reflection of what was also going on inside of him. Just like the garbage was piling up all around him, right. inside him also things were piling up. Right, everything was getting increasingly more and more tense. Until finally it explodes, right? Sure. And um, so his insides mi- mirrored the outsides, and um, yeah. So nice. Th- th- there was this. Um, there is a um, a complete uh, betrayal or lack of investment um, that wasn't just affecting him, but uh, in fact, there's that scene where uh, the train is is uh, he's on the train, he's going into the city. And there's just this notion that there are places that have, uh, and then there's a, the scene where he goes into the, um, where uh, uh, Wayne is um, in that um, uh, museum where they're watching a, a Charlie Chaplin film. Right. <clears throat> and oh there's gosh. no garbage there. Everybody's dressed up. It's nice. There's right. this sort of like right. you know. There's this. There's this. Um, there are two worlds, and there's a world that he briefly has some contact with. And that his mom also had a part of until she was pushed out of. So there's a way in which uh, there is a, there is an mm-hmm. unequal distribution that he's had some sort of taste of. And if he'd been able to get some of the things he needed from that place, mm, my guess is he wouldn't have gone the way he went. Okay. That uh, <clears throat> thank you. That answers my question about about this because I just wonder with enough support uh, would he have been maybe not so. <laughs> Fast to get onto that homicidal <laughs> track through his life. Well, remember the first, this first, I mean, he told us at the very beginning when he was talking to his therapist that all I have are bad thoughts. Right. And then he has this journal, and we only get glimpses of it, and it looks like it's pictures of porn and and all sorts of things that you, you only get a glimpse of. And so right. if, it's, if that's somewhere an, a portal to his mind, it's chaotic, it's dangerous, it's difficult. But his first act of killing someone is self-defense. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not um, these three guys. Right. You know, and in they the rep- subway. Yeah. And they represent sort of the upper middle class. They he was attacked by wealthy. Um, you know, it's as if and uh, he even says when he's on um, the talk show before he shoots the guy, the talk show host guy, he says, you know, if if uh, I had shot three people like me, you wouldn't have noticed. You know, mm-hmm. so they're 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 in the background against this is this sort of um, this um, this class conflict, this lack of distribution of things. There is something about, and if we go back to the McGowan quote, um, what if there had been just enough shame 
that we wouldn't have let something like this happen. We make the assumption that the reason why the garbage folks were striking is because of wages, right? Right, sure. We imagine that what what all started this is that there is, you know, um, and Wayne, when he's dis- and he, all this point, he's deciding whether he's going to run for uh, for mayor. And finally, he makes the announcement, and um, uh, he both disparages and then has this sort of paternalistic approach to the poor. They don't know that they need me. I'm going to give them hope. I'm going to whatever. So there's right, this, you right. Know, I'm going to help you out. Yeah, you clowns. Right. By yeah. the way. <laughs> that it's was the last phase. Uh, so not, you know, it's like he he has. There's no <laughs> no clear sense of the individuals that he's trying to reach out or needs to reach out to. There is this division between these two worlds, and it's interesting when he's when he sees Bruce Wayne, he reaches to him through the um, bars, and mm-hmm. he puts his hands on his neck. And at first, that seems like yes, that could have gone. Go. This is gonna this be, could be horrible. Yes, exactly. But once again, it was an attempt at connection, and there is uh, he is from a place of poverty reaching through bars to a place of wealth. And I can mm-hmm. see almost at that mm-hmm. moment he was attempting to have some sort of symbiotic connection with young Bruce Wayne, that there's something about what he has on the other side that he doesn't have. So I think it all does boil down to, you know, and not just wealth distribution, but the distribution of, of everything. Uh, he, he, in some ways, was um, uh, what, uh, what some of the uh, postal king folks would say, a... Um, the Joker himself was an intrusion, a return of the repressed. There were lots of things that the, the people like Thomas Wayne probably wanted to forget. People who were in positions of power, people who have um, who were on the other end of that economic scale, they had continually pushed this back, and the Joker becomes a symptom, uh, a return of the repressed, sponsoring riots, killing folk. And we know the way this is going to go, he's going to become a, a major source of destruction yes. in years to come. More, so. more to come uh, mm-hmm. in this situation. Uh, I find it um, interesting that this movie has brought out so much of this, and there's so much talk about it. And um, I, I'm trying to drop back to the directors and producers and the writers. Uh, I assume this was not a book that it was taken from, but I from think the Todd Phillips and someone else did the screenplay, and so uh, no. Yes, yeah, so that it was a screenplay. Well, a, obviously, a lot of thought went into this mm-hmm. in terms of everything that we talk about on this show a lot in terms of mental health and the issues and the struggles that people mm-hmm. have and trying to figure out who they are and their identity and build a life and those kind of issues. So. Um, really kind of uh, it set the stage for a lot of conversation. Mm-hmm. All right, so go, going back to your presentation, mm-hmm. I realize our time is limited today, mm-hmm. so I want to make sure that we uh, cover uh, some of those things that, mm-hmm. that, that people are going to be exposed to mm-hmm. uh, coming up in your presentation. Tell me about that. Well, the, the idea is that, that, um, you know, uh, um, that we have to work together to think some dangerous thoughts. And um, you could even think about mm. the Joker himself as sort of a dangerous thought. It, there were lots of folks who said the movie was going to cause copycat crimes. You couldn't be dressed as Joker, go to see the film. Uh, they said it was going to cause an incel uprising. Okay. So somehow All right, there we that, go. It, you know, that it was going to, you know. Um, but And the selling of a lot of clown masks. Sorry. Good. It would be yeah. <laughs> couldn't resist. That's but uh, yeah, Halloween they, is going to be a lot of clowns on the street. I found right? they make great marital aids. <laughs> but um, also the big, big feet, big shoes. Yeah, the big. It's not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the big shoes. See, a, see what I start sometimes. Okay, I, that was it. all my fault. But, all right, but uh, go back. So, so the Joker itself is a dangerous thought. There, there, there are things that we need to try to think. We need to try to be able to move through. Mm-hmm. We need to be able to experience and feel. And then allow ourselves to see what 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 we can uh, we can what we can metabolize as a result of their impact. And so the statement that I make at the beginning of the paper is attempted is it should, you know, it, it's supposed to be disturbing in some way. But the disturbance could could go a couple of ways. It could um, it could cause you to spit it out. That's a stupid thing to say. Mm-hmm. It could cause you to yeah, let's go kill rich people. Both of those are um, are acting out. They are not a space of thought. Right? Mm-hmm. So the goal would mm-hmm. be, once you articulate that statement, how do you create a space where people can begin to think, what does this mean? Right. You know, what, 
what um, and the Joker would be the same way as well. If you saw the film, you could say, well, uh, it didn't seem at least not so far. I haven't seen an incel uprising, and right. if there was an incel uprising, I, I don't know how many incels there are. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure that's <laughs> <don't need> but, <laughs> but um, um, I, I don't see it as um. What I what I see it doing potentially is starting a conversation like you and Mike or uh, Tom. You, you're Mike. You and yeah. Tom. You and Tom. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What if we get it was Mike and Mike? <laughs> well, good? yeah. Well, I think we've been playing off of that for a number of years now. But yeah, that's Tom. <laughs> that's Tom. Yeah. And uh, the he heck. has his own version. Okay, right. So, um, you guys had a conversation. We're having one now. I um, I see people who either love or hate the film. That sort of it's right. inspired some. It is nothing in the middle. It has it to be really, right. Yeah, right. It really is. Just, and I think even that suggests something. It's you know like. Um, just like the statement that I make at the beginning of the paper, you can spit it out, or you can too quickly agree, or you can allow yourself s- some space in between. It it, it okay. works a little like a like a parable. It works a little like a, a statement that should, and you begin to think about what that can mean. And so um, I, I'm trying to uh, to make use of some psychoanalytic constructs to be able to to assist in thinking that without falling sure. to either one of those extremes. Right. And to be able to think about like. Um, you know, um, the, the facts are, when we talk about distribution, uh, there is enough land, enough food, enough resources for all of us. Right. There is not, we're not in a place where these are, that we're, our conflicts are not over, are not really over scarcity because we have that possibility. Right. It's just there. And so, um, so why are people starving in different parts why? of the world? Uh, I mean, that, that makes no sense. Why are people not getting mental health coverage they need? Why True. are uh, uh, insurance copays going through the roof? Um, why prescription uh, drugs? Yeah. Uh, why and, you know what you know, what is and it would be easy to you know point the finger. Well, it's all big pharma. Well, they certainly have a they they certainly have a, an element to this. Mm-hmm. Um, it would also be really easy to point to the individual. To be able to say, well, um, it, it, in, from the left to the right, from the right it would be, well, this is all personal choice. If people made better choices, then they wouldn't have this sort of stuff, you know. Right. If they, they went to church, they did these sort of things, these may help. From the left it can be, um, well, you know what, if we all just started to recycle, if we all just did this. And it's not that either of those can't have some sort of help either side, mm-hmm. but they mm-hmm. still keep us away from the bigger question of why is this the way it is? Why would this... Of all the possible worlds, why are we on this trajectory? What makes this possible? And and I, I sort of look at just psychoanalytic therapy in general because for the longest time it has it's sort of been um, the only th- it, it's for wealthy people. That's yes. You know because the number of, of times you have to go, right. the cost involved, et cetera. So, so yeah, there is. In fact, to some degree. Um, any mental health, consistent mental health coverage is something for people who have money. That's I mean, right. you have to have a job, you have to be able to make co-pays. So any, any investment in your own mental health through any of these services requires this. So my, my, my thought is twofold is that, okay, what does that mean? And is there something inherent? And I was, I'm sort of trying to think about it in terms of the psychoanalytic theory itself. Is there something inherent in this? Is his, is it does it have a blind spot to wealth distribution and class conflict? Okay. Is that built into the theory itself, or is this a blind mm-hmm. spot that you know that isn't necessarily inherent to the theory, but that is mm-hmm. inherent to the um, that it is a victim of the context in which it occurs, and I, I, I lean more toward that mm-hmm. that you know there's um, uh, um I mean let's let's take the Joker, um, this in the Joker would need. Uh, and, I, and I'm not saying I'm by any means God's gift to psychotherapy. Right. But um, I think I'm a pretty good therapist. And someone, so. someone yeah. like him couldn't afford me. There and you go. he needs someone like me or better because of the extent of his issues, right? right? Yes. These are deep issues you really have so to explore. So what he's going to get explore. is the minimal amount of, of mental health care with the minimally trained. With, with people who are overworked, he's literally going to get less of what he needs 
when he, he should be the one, it should be reversed. Uh, that, it, absolutely. He Stupid, should be, right? he should get five days a week of somebody who is trained to deal with psychosis and help him think the things, <sighs> but he won't get it. No, no. Right. And, and, and also he, <clears throat> as in the movie, it was portrayed, this is the low rung of the uh, social um <clears throat> uh, uh, side of things where they could be canceled at any time. The and therapy, the drugs, everything can be can- canceled out. So, mm-hmm. and so as a result of that, and even if we take, um, if we were to put on our our, uh, our conservative hats and and think about this from terms of um, um, just in terms of of uh, social resources and taxes and things like that, mm-hmm. um, he ended up costing a lot more money. Yes, and <laughs> lives. They, I guess we if they had never. just thrown, if they had invested money in his care, right, right, right. So literally, I mean, the just, billions of dollars, millions, if even not billions, <laughs> that he helped in, in in the future will, of course, also uh, probably a couple of times almost destroying the world. Um, if if he had gotten the resources he needed, and so what is that about? What why are the folks who need the most skilled and most trained therapists get the opposite, right? The more money you got, the more likely you're going to get the. And that's not just with mental health care. That's with everything. Oh yeah, it's, I mean it's not. The board right now. It's yeah, not that's, a. That's uh, right. But with with mental health, I think it that that probably that's that's what I know. But when I see patients who come in, who are severely mentally ill, they they typically get so little, and um, we have to think about like. You know, and, and part of what I think can be cool with cyclonic theory is that um, we uh, we have a running in the background. You can hear its throb and hum. Is a system that we're part of, and it is the background. And so we don't think about it. This horizon that we're we're walking around in, we don't think it can be changed. We just accept it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we don't question the fact that it's that okay. Well, some people have you know. 20 billion dollars and some people have nothing and that's just the way it is it's the background so for us to be able to think the possibility of changing that horizon the possibility of there potentially being something else something has to happen right and um um we've talked about that guy in here love yes and Zizek. Um, uh, he has a book called violence and uh, which got him in trouble because he would say the only way to change the horizon is a violence, an event. Mm. In some ways, the Joker was, was an attempt to stage that. Suddenly, the whole system is up in arms. Things are being broken and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But that's more of an impotent violence. Um, there's a famous saying by, uh, by Zizek, I mentioned it here, that um, the problem with Hitler is he wasn't violent enough. Okay. And, but he follows it up by saying, and someone who was violent enough was Gandhi. Now, you know what Gandhi's great violent act was? Like, Hitler didn't change the system. He even he even ran on, let's make Germany great again. That's literally what he ran on, by the way. It was, you know, the whole idea of a Third Reich is we're going to bring back the good stuff and it's going to be cool and whatnot. Okay, you're that, bringing me <laughs> too close to reality yeah, right is, now, is, but you know okay, I got it. Yeah. yeah. And um, it literally was, uh, it, there was nothing about that that was being changed. Um, well, what Gandhi did is he told people to simply stop. The violence was everything will stop if we're not heard, if things aren't considered. And it all did. It came to a grinding halt. So there is something. It doesn't mean violence as in burning things. And uh, In fact, you know what happens when you do that is you literally um, you take away the legitimacy of your claims. They can call you clowns and monsters as opposed to being able to, to listen to what you have to say. Any sort of impotent rage comes from a place of, um, of disempowerment, and you've, you've already uh, uh, kept the possibility of being heard. is, is, is just not there. Um, so the violence we're talking about that could have happened to the Joker, I mean, it would have made a much... Uh, wouldn't have been a, uh, as good a movie as he'd turned into Gandhi, suddenly became a vegan and started wearing robes. And, uh, no, but we have to. They probably yeah. wouldn't. But well, you know. yes, there was a. This is this ended as uh, the Joker um, uh, began in a, in a way. This was the opening uh, to the Batman saga. Mm. In that, 
So it was a glimpse out of that. Well, so are you going to say to your um, audience mm -hmm. that um, they should do, um, you know, uh, charge less? Uh, maybe uh, well, take on some pro bono. I mean, I mean, what do you um, think? This is the. This would be the problem. Any time we place the um, the problem, their concern on the individual, that's like saying, "Well, okay, nothing wrong with recycling." Right. But when uh, corporations and nations are the f responsible for ninety nine percent of what goes wrong, what you're actually doing, if I say to them, we'll take on people pro bono, nothing wrong with that. That certainly can be helpful. But that doesn't change the system that throbs in the background. Right. That's right. literally letting it off the hook. I shouldn't be asking myself, you know what, I need to make less money. <laughs> That's That doesn't, you know, that, that not that what we should be asking is, we need to change this so this doesn't have to happen. So it isn't that I wouldn't ask them that, that they couldn't do this, but what I would ask them is, how do you rip and tear the fabric around us in all the right ways for the possibility of something else getting in, of changing the very horizon? Well, it's going to be an interesting talk. So um, mm -hmm. where, where is this talk? Just for Opelika. So Opelika, no. You, that's a favorite town of yours, I know. I've Anything heard you talk said, about it before. Uh, but, it's going to be at Rutgers. Uh, I'll be at, uh, at Ru New Jersey. Oh, okay. Rutgers. You're going up uh, that, that direction. All right. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. So if uh, I might make the news. There'll be police cars. There, Actually, there, yes. we won't turn over police cars. We're going to turn, off go or turn over golf carts. There'll be a lot yes, of on the golf people course. turning over golf carts, <laughs> and then, you know. I totally understand that, <laughs> that act of, uh, okay, so um, that's very cool, and um, this is a lot, you, you've given us a lot to think you, you, about today, you, it, and, and, and I think everybody really needs to think, that's a, the part of this movie that I, that I think was amazing, and that Tom and I mm -hmm. talked about, was that people are talking about it. Uh, and not for what you would think uh, in terms of the Batman and well, superhero uh, sagas, but actually how this well, this person turned out and what were the Batman's causes. But Batman's a wonderful example. There's two things to think about, maybe two takeaways. And one is that um, whenever we see something like this, this sort of abuse, we often point to, well, what sort of person would do this, right? Right. But the problem with that, not that we can't do that, the problem we should ask is, what sort of world have we built where this can happen? Yes. That is the only way we can really evoke the kind of change we need. Not why did this person do this or right, what can I do, but to ask what sort of world do we live in and then begin from there. And there's an interesting thing. There's um, um, uh, Peter Rollins is sort of, a, sort of a Lacanian theologian guy, and he has a story he talks about, and he talks about how uh, and he may have actually gotten this from Zizek, I can't remember. But um, who's the real criminal? Because um, Batman, who has all this money at night, puts on a suit and goes and beats up the very people that um, probably he wouldn't have to beat up if they were had some of his money. Right. So <laughs> it is a... Fair and it was a... Right, so there is... He, he goes into the criminal elements of Gotham where all, you know, people are this way right. without even thinking about, you know, wait a minute, maybe there's a way to rebuild this. Huh. Well, it certainly is a split and it certainly seems relevant to our world uh, these days and I think uh, that's probably why it had such a big impact, continuing to have a big impact. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck on your talk. So I hope there are no police cars or golf course carts uh, turned over mm -hmm. during that uh, and gonna, it, it, there will be no violence associated with it. I was so. going to say I'll dress like a clown, but I, that's every day. It's not that's, really uh, <laughs> All right. All right, my friend. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I guess we'll stop there. I'll see you next time.